Um, are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Uh, I have two adjustments. Uh, we can strike item number two, the noise ordinance request. Uh, okay. And then the other one I've got is, um, I think Duncan might have specific language, but uh, to handle and deal with uh, the rec coordinator position. The appointment of the rec coordinator position. Uh, let's make that number two. Okay. And I don't know if this could go under select board's concerns. I was going to give a very brief and probably extremely uninformative um, report update on the assessor status. Okay. Uh, under select board or do it as an item? Let's do it as an item. Let's do it as number three. Well, yes, yeah, number three. Why not? Uh, I, I'll really cover that when we get to it. We are. Okay. Are you looking forward to, to it? Just want to check this majority. There's a chair that's less squeaky right there. If you would like, if you'd like. <laughs> would you like that? <laughs> <laughs> I would love it. That's what I like that. Yeah, they can hear it over the <laughs> it was Mark. Yeah, you're wondering. Beth, Beth gets after me for clicking. My That's right. <laughs> All squeaking must be. Okay. okay. Uh, reviewing orders. Are you ready? All things asphalt $1,250 for the remainder of the asphalt bill. Atco International, gloves, wipes. Gloves, pens, planner, total of $1,232.37. That is a lot of gloves. Are these special gloves by any chance? Wipes? Okay, Donna, if you didn't hear that, it based, uh, Jason basically said that there's better pricing at bulk. So he ordered um, cartons of supplies as opposed to individual boxes. Thanks, Jason. Um, ATC group services, groundwater monitoring, um, $695.94 with $695.93 due from the village. Russo Fuels, Town Diesel Tank, um, a total of $1,186, sorry, $68.44 with $187.76 due from the village. That seems a little, I don't know how to. What does Just that the village thing? is less than $200 worth of fuel in a month. That's, the date range is a week, not a month. Have they got their new electric bucket truck? Yeah, not, not, not the electric. Um, Christopher Center tax overpayment of thirty five twenty seven. Drew Fairbanks, tax credit overpaid H20, $8.20. Johnson Hardware and Rental, um, the Trailhead, the Ted Alexander Welcome Center, let me be more correct in my statement, um, $1,098.03. Miscellaneous expense, stain, $53.99. A brush, $10.16. Paint, $48.99. Elbow brushing and coupling, $37.01. Elbow brushing and coupling, $21.56. Electrical uh, magnet, $46.32. Screw staple connector, $19.99. Tape frame cover, $28.61. Bucket lid, 113.34. Uh, paint tape, paint slash tape, $10.86. 87, 
slip hook clip 2682, contractor bag 2299, peat moss uh, 7396 for a total of $1,612.63. Another Johnson Hardware and Rental invoice for conduit, uh, 253.36. A cover box for the trail. These are uh, trail held building. Uh, the conduit was, and the cover box is 976. Uh, trail held building concrete uh, duty cover, 4812. Concrete for facilities and maintenance, 4194. Drywall slash box for trailhead building 2430. Generator rental for the trailhead building $50. Plastic staple 995, also trailhead building, trailhead building, towel uh, goof, I assume they say it. Off box wire 144.73. Connector box for the trailhead building 716. Uh, syringe for trailhead building 749. Cover box credit of $20.20 for trailhead building. Sealant for building grounds, maintenance supplies, 1990. Lift rental for beautification, $358. Braid stakes for beautification, $12.65. Charger box outlet wire, trailhead, trailhead building, $488.62. Cover box for trailhead building, $24.00. 89 for a total of $1,480 and 67 cents. Any questions on any of those? Lamont County Sheriff's Department alarm, alarm monitoring um, for a total of $270 with $202.50 due from the village. Mile Regional Solid Waste, uh, Toters, 45.50. Kristen McDowell, Library Programs, 52.74. Uh, Menashe Sand for a total of, Winter Sand specifically, for a total of $4,427.92. Milton Cat, uh, Pad Pin for Backo, 154.38. Kyle Noose, Mural Celebration Beautification, $327.30. Vermont Offender Work Program, Bookcase Table for ARPA Grant Expense. I assume that's for the library. We didn't, we didn't order anything like that. It's, Why is it for ARPA Grant Expense? They did? Yeah, the library has been able to access a certain amount of ARPA funds that are unrelated to our okay. ARPA cool. funds. Okay, that is $790.22. And can I go back just quickly to the. Hold on, let me just finish this one line because I don't think I got it all. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, to the pages. And then grant fund purchases of $808.74 for a total of $1,000. $598.96. And again, that was Vermont Offender Work Program. Uh, yep, go ahead. Duncan. So on, on the very top of the page, look, what is the category of toters under the mile? That's for the Kitchen Night Live. They took some of that check to all those Okay. Okay, Village of Johnson, 10 cents on grand list for $61,569. Fire contract for 2022, $95,059. Is that, is that um, for the village uh, grand list? Is that the actual 10% of the grand list or is that the Vermont, um, Donna, were you able to hear Duncan's question? What, what he asked just now? Yeah. Or the one? No, I wasn't. Okay. 
Um, his question was if the 10 cents on the grand list was actual cost or an agreed upon amount. And the answer from Rosemary was, was that it was actual. Thanks for capturing that. Um, okay, Vermont Municipal Clerk uh, membership, professional training, $55. Vermont Arborists, uh, ash borer treatment, $910. And that will do it. Okay. Um, review and approve minutes of past meeting from September 6th. The September 6th meeting? Yeah. Anyone like to make a motion? Or should we hold off until next time if you're not prepared? Motion to approve minutes. Make a motion, do we have a second? Yeah. And a second? I will recuse myself. I will not hear that. Okay, Eric's recused. Oh, um, I did read those minutes and I believe the minutes reflect that Eric was there. So the minutes should be corrected to reflect that Eric was not there. Is that a friendly amendment? It would be. I, well, I think would it be by the motion maker? <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case, it's friendly. Okay. And you're good with that, Mark? Yep. Okay, we have a friendly amendment. Did you grab that? Did you catch that, Donna? Yep, got it. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, ayes have it. Um, board members, when you're doing orders, just look on the second page because there is a second page to be signed in one of the, in the last packet. Just the last packet, yeah. Okay. Can I have my pen back, please? Hey. <laughs> All right, Evan thinks he's funny tonight. Uh, select board issues and concerns. I got one. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, kind of, it, it might be slightly related to the question you posed about are we still reviewing <laughs> letters and whatnot. In, in the past, we have talked generically about um, looking at more seriously a purchase order system. Um, I would like to see us do that. What do we need to do to make that happen? I think that we need to, uh, well, I would say we need to prioritize it against the other projects on our list of things to consider is what I would say. We've looked at a lot of items that are not on the list recently. <laughs> It's true. We haven't looked at. <clears throat> yes, that is true. We have not looked at our priority list. So I guess what I'm suggesting is that we. Other than I'll say, other than ARPA, list. other than ARPA, and I think it is on the list. I think it is one of the things that was an idea that wasn't highly prioritized. But I'll confirm that. I'd have to double check to know where it I'll fell. It, it was. It was at least discussed. It was discussed. Yeah. So okay. let's pull the list up and make a point to look at it. Okay, I would very much like to get that on our agenda as a as an item. You're thinking being that it would shorten this process. Well, it might obviate the need for this process depending on what we adopted for a policy. I'm gonna put on our on our agenda to look at the priority list and we can talk about that in relation to the priority idea. list. Okay. Uh, on other issues and concerns, um, Duncan, the work you did on resetting those stones look really good. Um, so thank you for doing that. And if yeah. folks. It was impressive. I didn't realize you were up there with your backhoe and stuff. That's on, that's on Brian's agenda yep. yeah, uh, later on. So I can talk about it then if you want. That sounds perfect, but it looks really nice. Thank you. But you weren't in the tractor parade. I was out of town. Neither was Evan. Yeah. Eric was in it. 
tractor was. Your tractor was, but you weren't. I was not in town. So I was in a lot of places this weekend. Um, okay, uh, any other issues and concerns? All right, Rosemary, you're up. I think we should just leave that there anyway, pointed at you and Duncan. We can, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't count? No, I don't. Eric can speak up. We can point it towards you if we need to. Okay. Is that budget not here? That's your first. Um, there's a current year budget status report. And to date, we're at 15% spent a budget. And on the current taxes, I was hoping today the state would give me the school amount. But apparently, they've been having some problems with their, a lot of their state websites were down today. So that's why it looks like it's at 252% of budget. Yeah. Okay. We've got the first quarter of this highway money. You know, Merle Project received about $4,000 in donations, which is good. The mural, the, the um, mural. Yeah. Yeah. Jason just asked me to look at the Beth, you comment about the signature pages, is it, is it like the very next page? Oh, yeah. I think that should be in desk control. It's called to desk control, but I'll double check it. Right. That we ordered a lot, a lot of songs. Well, that's true. Good job, paying attention, Jason. <laughs> So is this cash on hand page as of okay, so as of the end of the year? End of the year. And on the second page are Brian and myself's um, recommendations to do for the two hundred five thousand we have on cash on hand. That's uncommitted. The hundred thousand reduced taxes that was already in our budget, right? Oh, this is an additional hundred thousand for next year. Oh, for next year. Yeah. Okay. Um. Are, so before, actually, sorry, I got ahead of you a little bit. I think. Is there anything you want to talk about before the cash on hand? Are there any questions for Rosemary on the current taxes or the? Okay. Shall we dive into it? <clears throat> okay. Um, so the these are for, these do these match what we did last year. Recommendations are for these. Uh, the ones that we adopted into our budget are the lower half of the first page. Where it says reservations in town report. <clears throat> that one. Okay, yeah. Those are the last year's recommendations. That, that, that is that in, the board the, in those line items. Yep, that's yep. what the board approved. So after that, we still have 205, 286? Yep. Yep. And out of that 205, uh, you've already taken out we had left over the payment. Yes. 
and the reduced tax amount, right? Is this 100,000 is an additional 100,000 for next year? Yes. How large does the tax anticipation fund need to be to cover our costs for first quarter? I believe it's first quarter. I mean, quarter. is it is it used every quarter? Or I think I thought first quarter was the biggest issue because we didn't have any revenue, but we had so much large expenses mm -hmm. with emergency services and public probably, works being summer. Probably two fifty. Because it's already at two ninety. So do we need to put another twenty five thousand in there? Is that a buffer that? Or well, I guess. I guess I think proposes what the voters more. authorized was up to 10 percent of your yearly tax budget is what it okay. could be the cap yeah mm -hmm. and we so for already forty thousand above what's believed do we want to put another forty thousand there be eighty thousand above what we believe we need to your to your point, Evan, once it goes into a reserve fund, it can only be spent for that purpose. So I'm supporting the right your well, I'm, question. I'm asking the question. If it's already comfortable, is there a need to put forty thousand more in it? It's also very difficult to know where the police department, or, you know, police. Yeah. Services are coming in next year. And I also think we know we're going to have a big reappraisal expense too, which is a different reserve. Probably it is, but but it might be worth putting some of that in the reappraisal fund. Mm -hmm. If if taxes go out on time, tax bills, and they start coming in August tenth, that's September first due date, but. If for any reason, and there have been in the past where tax bills couldn't go out for whatever reason until you know later on, end of July, we would need another month of uh, either cash on hand to carry us, or we'd have to borrow. Forty thousand pounds is a couple of more. No, no, we already have a buffer of that. So do we want to buffer eighty thousand? question i just know that the first quarter as of july 1st we have a lot of bills that's why i said specifically first quarter because I, I feel like that's the biggest pain point and, i mean you have better feel how old the checking account gets before revenue starts coming back I mean, well lately lately hasn't been getting very well all the money we have on cash on here which yeah, which next year we might not have a problem mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we keep trying to tighten tighten the budget every year, and we you know we typically do a little bit conservative on our revenue in and a little bit more liberal, liberal on spending. Spend. Yeah. And we've always ended the year in the black. But it's just a cautionary note. I mean, we could could we do it? And the fund has been lower as a ratio of its whole budget than it is right now for several years, and we were okay. Uh, but I've made an effort the last few years of trying to strengthen that fund to protect us in, in circumstances like that. It was just a couple of years ago where the state didn't give us the tax numbers. I don't remember when we finally got them, but it was quite late. Yeah, the school budget. Had to do a revote on the school budget, I think. I, I don't remember enough of the specifics. And it has but... to be, they won't give us until the 30 day appeal for, yeah, because somebody could ask for another revote. We had to wait an additional 30 days. Yeah, we were okay that year, but we were, we had authorized you to mm -hmm. seek loans mm -hmm. because we, <clears throat> We didn't think we were going to be okay, but we managed to defer a couple of things until after our payments came in, so we didn't have to take out a loan. Um, just looking at the different funds, like the different reserve fund balances, and I'm curious, mostly about the last three on page two, which are the tax anticipation fund, the emergency fund, 
a flow of discharge, just those two. I'm not at the slide at the moment. Um, but just those two, are those adequate? If we had an, a true emergency, that is the emergency fund is not enough. Right. Not even close. No. Uh, I wonder if we should have a plan to build that more. Mm -hmm. Have we ever, when was the last time we withdrew from that? Do you know? We during withdrew the, during the, COVID. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> ice jam when stuff. Yeah. 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 Then when we got the money from FEMA, we reimbursed it. And also, but it took a good portion of that, what, whatever we had in that fund at the time. We had a uh, Connie Hall Bridge mm -hmm. worth 25000 We had the upfront money. We did finally get it. Most of it. You know. Yeah, they don't reimburse everything, but we got a good reimbursement from that. In that case, you use the emergency fund and not the bridge and culvert fund. Well, we did use emergency fund for that. But that was sort of the intent. It was an emergency that happened on this. And that um, previously, the bridge and culvert fund had didn't have much money in it. I gotcha. Because okay. we put the seventy five thousand that the historical society gave us into that bridge and culvert. Well, that is really low right now. Oh, I'm sorry, 97. Yeah. Okay. But that was, that, that was balanced. Hmm. Okay. 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 I asked the question because I actually wonder if rather than increasing the proposed reservation, which is one of those is a better category. But I wonder if putting money into that capital fund is a wise place to put it for the emergency fund. The emergency fund. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, the reappraisal fund we had pretty much depleted and 25,000 will not go very far. 25,000 in addition to what is budgeted for. What did it? And last year you lose it. Well, you're going to put 37400 in from last year. Okay. Plus you budgeted money in this year's budget. Okay. 30 well, well, 50 now. Yes. Yeah, it, it's, we couldn't pay for a reappraisal now, but it's headed in the right direction for when we need to pay for a reappraisal. Well, in the Budget approved the reappraisal fund is thirty-seven thousand. Right to that, go into it. That's yeah. So we're just on top of that. Mm -hmm. The twenty-five is on top of that, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, I I don't know, but I'm guessing it's going to cost us. What did it cost us when we did the full reappraisal back in two thousand two or three? Yeah. Hundred, little over hundred thousand. Over a hundred, hundred and twelve, something like that. That's twenty years. Ago. That's twenty years ago. I'm guessing it's going to cost us one hundred fifty, one hundred seventy thousand to do a full blown reappraisal, which we're going to be faced with sooner than later. It's probably two X. Yeah. Twenty years. Yeah, that could could easily be. Where's the CLA at? 97%. And when was so that? We got a list to go. Last well, December. That's we, last December. We might, but don't forget that CLA is what, lagging by three yeah, years? It's a three year average. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, we can do a statistical reappraisal at that point. We'll get ordered to do a reappraisal at 85%. Well, when can we do a statistical one? Because the last full town appraisal was when the rolling reappraisal was done, which was sent out in 2020. So it's only two years old. And Aren't you allowed to do a statistical reappraisal within 10 years? I don't know. I know we did it once. I don't remember the details on when yeah, you're allowed to. Yeah. Sorry. And that was on the three year. Yeah. 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 Ye
Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take into wait, account. Wait, wait, wait. Which one Eric? What it doesn't take into account is the sharp rise in home values that have been sold in the last year. Well, if they gave us if they gave us an update last December, would it have caught last the previous year? One year. Previous one year. And so but it was no. it, it wouldn't catch 22 mm -hmm. what's happened in 22. But 21 was a pretty banner year. But it would be diluted by 2019. Right. Right. And so when right. the CLA drops that amount in one year, we got concerned going the next year or the year after. Well, I thought it just dropped three percent. What did it drop? What are we yeah, like a hundred percent? We were over a hundred percent in 2020. Very close to 100. And now it's at 90. 97. Okay. So it's got three percent adding adding 21 in. Not a few things are nervous about 22 being like 21. But when you add 22 and subtract 19, it can move on more than three percent. But there's a lot of buffer there. Yeah, I agree. You know, I don't know how much of 21 because I think they do the sales study in the spring. But I, but what I'm hearing is what do we actually know what the solid number was just for 21, mm -hmm. not the rolling three year average? That would be curious. That that would make me feel better about how I got. Mm -hmm. I mean 21 could have been 15% off, but it would have been really buffered down by Mm -hmm. 2019, but we don't know what 21 is. We just know how much it's going to be. But in any case, if, if the reappraisal ends up costing somewhere between mm -hmm. 150 and 200, and we've and currently got 60 something uh, in the fund, where even if it's three years out, we've got to put money in. Yeah, we've got to so put more money in. So, I mean, with the proposed reservations, is everybody comfortable with the Highway Capital Equipment Fund? No, I'm not comfortable with that yet. Okay. That. Can we do one of them that everybody's comfortable with so we can check it? Sure. <laughs> can you pick one? Uh, can we pick the, uh, to reduce taxes, 23, 24, $100,000? I don't think we know until we talk about the other things. I think we just should keep talking about things. Okay. Uh, sorry, Evan. It was great. I was going to propose taking the $40,000 for the tax anticipation fund, splitting that up, putting $10,000 in the tax anticipation fund of that 40, taking 15 of that 40, putting it in the reappraisal reserve fund, and another 15 of that 40 and putting it in the emergency fund. So the tax anticipation reappraisal fund still would grow by 10,000. The reappraisal reserve fund, in addition to our thirty-seven thousand, would grow by forty thousand on top. So that's quite a jump. And the emergency fund would grow by fifteen thousand dollars. I like that in theory, but I would like to know where we are with the capital, with the highway capital fund, because of that dip that we keep talking about. Huge one. Mm -hmm. Especially if we don't sell the greater we have, it'll be red. So what is our what does that look like right now? Our highway, our highway capital fund is in good shape with the sale of the grade. No, not right now. What does it look like in 2024 or five? Uh, throughout its, its life, it, it's in good shape if we sell the grade. It's all contingent on selling that grader because that's a, a huge liability for us to carry. Well, I, I thought there was a dip yeah, in 2024. Yeah. No. Do the do I the thought there was a dip. I was still positive, but I thought that there was a low point. There is a low point in, uh, I believe it's FY25. Is it in here? Uh, it, oh, I guess the updated one wouldn't be in here anyways. That one, the, the, the dip is the same year, if that's what you want to look at, but the dollar amount would be a little bit different. Yeah, we don't get to that India yet. Or in there. I'm not sure about that. Is our new grade still in India or we'll look at that? Brazil. Brazil. 
I did some rough estimates on it. I, sorry, I don't have anything to show you on that, but the 40,000 that I'm bringing in there is mostly to offset increased costs. It does rely on us successfully selling the greater at, uh, I don't remember how much I had targeted for. What say again? What, was it a minimum of one ten? I believe that it, it's one ten. It it might be one fifteen or or that that neighborhood, but one ten sounds right. It, we should go lower. Let's just say ninety for budget. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You still want that? Um. But yeah, it. it it, it goes into the assumption that we sell that. The 40,000 will not make a serious difference if we are unable to sell the greater. Yeah. The 40,000 that I'm suggesting here is just to deal with increased costs of equipment. Which is probably uh, pretty conservative. That 40,000 could be one piece of equipment. Small piece of equipment. That's yes. Yeah. I mean, well, the I mean a, a variable of one piece of equipment. Yeah. Yeah. The spreadsheet used to, uh, maybe it's been adjusted, up None. but it used to have a factor of, I think, 3% annual in, increasing. What, what's, it, what's the increase factor now? <laughs> I think we're going to right size it right now. They have to do more like 8 or 9% annually. I, I don't know if you bought a car. But, well, yeah, but I, I guess what I'm saying is that it, it, there was at least some factor in that for, yeah. for increasing. And there still is. Uh, it still compounds, like everything farther than a year out has, I think you're right, I think it's still a 3%, 3%. compounding annually so uh, for its estimated cost. Just that. Yeah. And that would be an easy, easy year. Uh, Unfortunately, we're already running way behind, and Rosemary does have a long drive after the meeting. So I'm proposing that we put a larger section in our next meeting about this and do some playing with the capital equipment reserve fund. And Susan. So the thing, just to wrap up what we just talked about, we talked about a proposal to put extra money in highway capital. Ryan will provide an updated spreadsheet for us to play with. There was a proposal to put money in the emergency fund, the reappraisal fund, and then also a let's make sure we're considering the sheriff's department. Can we talk about all of this too? I think their budget's going to go up. The sheriff's department? I don't know. Are, are you He's comfortable if we put less in the tax anticipation reserve fund? Oh, okay. That's the number one question. Okay, okay, what's the other paperwork, Rosemary? I think that's all that I have. We're still no. in current taxes. Oh, current, yeah. Still in taxes. We collected a balance of 8.3.8% 8 .8 taxes on the first installment. And totally for the year, we collected 39.36%, which is slightly more than the past two years. Trending in the right direction. Yes. I like it. Is that because people pay ahead? I think people are, they get more state payments. I put mine on your bill, so. 
Mine's paid. Uh, I'm moving for delinquent taxes. Here's Mr. a list. Keep things moving as a slow as That's a quick tap. Last year, we are currently at 58%, 58,000 less than delinquent taxes. More or less than? I think it's a little bit less. There's some big ones in here. Yes. And we have a policy already on when those go out for the attorney. So yeah. we'll put them out to in the attorney after December. <clears throat> and that's more than a thousand dollars. Did you have um, this statute thing? Was that was that something of yours? That yep. you had? Um Beth was asking about the tobacco licenses. Several years ago, the state changed the policy, or not the change the policy, but they were not sending tobacco licenses for the boards to sign. Apparently when they were redoing the laws, they noticed that they, the practice that they were doing was contrary to what the statute's stating. And apparently they're going back to where the uh, local control boards will approve the tobacco licenses before they're sent to the state. And if there is no local control board, it comes to select board. Are we are we the board by default? You're the board by default. Yeah. Um, and those are. This is tobacco, not cannabis. I understand. Yeah. And the cannabis board is specifically cannabis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did we have any situations where an individual was getting just a tobacco license and not? The only place I can think of, but they haven't gotten one for several years that I, that, that I'm aware of, is across from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't. The other place where DJ used to be, to my knowledge, is I don't know if they sell tobacco in there or not. I've never been there. Oh, yeah, I never have either. <laughs> <laughs> and if I had, I wouldn't have been there. <laughs> Tobacco products. Vaping has tobacco products, and I would be shocked if they are not like that. Well, I'll go in. Let's see. Ask for their tobacco license. They're supposed to have it posted on the. It's supposed to be prominently post. displayed. Yeah. yeah. And there'd be a fee of one hundred and ten dollars. That's a fee to the state, I believe. Going to the state. Mm -hmm. So said. The legislative body of the municipality, yeah. a fee of. Because at the time it was, if they had a liquor license, they didn't have to pay a tobacco. But maybe that has since changed. And when they get a liquor license, it doesn't default them with a tobacco license. No, I, I looked at one today, uh, and it did not have anything about tobacco on it. Hmm. Okay. okay. Well, thanks for clarifying. That's unfortunate. I think that's all I have. Thank you, Rosemary. Good um, luck at your conference. You would you. like to, oh, you're leaving right now? No, um, Brian wanted me to stay for Jenna's promise. Go. Oh. Okay. I was going to say you can leave when I leave. So, do we need to take any action on? I think Evan made a proposal to table the discussion to the next meeting. Do we need to take any formal action on that? I'm getting so. a no. What's that? I'm getting a no. Oh, okay. Except we just need to make sure it's on the next. Just need to make sure it's on the next. Okay. Next item, public works. Jason, you're up. How's it going? Good, yeah. Oh, pretty good. So this month we uh, finished. Uh, column two, build up and make a little. Also, uh, we're grading the back row, which is from what we did again. Not to get that. Our current projects, we are, uh, we've got three rows left for mowing, which is a uh, cemetery, dotting hall, and our swamp row. Finish up tomorrow. Uh, we took 201 loads of kitchen material off, um, and make one more drop. 
important. And uh, yeah, the sand is all all I believe I'm waiting for the last information to not question where my sources that they add to make sure. Okay. Uh, and then the upcoming projects uh, is the box wall network. Should be starting that next Monday or this Friday, depending on whether. One way lane is on this street, so they got two culverts left. They're ditching up on Colin Sell and they go look, look good. There's a nice job. That's really it. They had a lot of confidence in the water. Yeah. Very nice. Jerry's said how they love it when the women when they drive off. <laughs> It's not my girl. It'll be a nice smooth transition. Yeah. Maybe I'll even sum up here to the driveway. I've seen some of those, you know, in the winter, plow when you make that look pretty level. Then you pull over, or heading up Clay Hill when you go around that thing, pull over. I was going to kick one off the tree. I have to do that. Does look good. Did you end up getting any? Material hold for the skate park. Yep, uh, it's not all hold yet because uh, we are very clean kitchen materials for them. And nothing wrong with each other. One way it doesn't have any knowledge to that all those parts. Dump um, site for that and then box lot. Not all of it is, but a lot of it's got knowledge in it. So I'm just waiting. I'm planning on still. We are planning on still doing the new table. Uh, so the rest of the material will come out of that. Do we have much poison arsenic? Uh, not so much on the road side, it's more on the rail trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, for the Dr. Seaton covering the air for him, uh, I talked to Brian about it. She was curious about us putting the road in so they could do uh, get chips. Hey, I can't hear. I can't. I can't tell what Jason's saying right now. Oh, Jason, can you come up. Thanks, Let me grab a thanks chair. for speaking up, Donna. I said I talked to Susan Lovering about uh, a pathway uh, in the arboretum and a road for them to bring in wood chips. And we are going to do that uh, in mid to the end of October. And that's inside the arboretum, right? Not that the, uh, no, that's inside. Yeah, that's inside the arboretum from the down at the field where the gravel pathway ends to the, where they keep their compost and wood chips. How, how, how extensive a project is that? We're going to take down. Six to eight inches of material, depending on what we spread in the area. And there's no matter down the use of bank run out of the tip. And that's pretty wet. It is down there. And there was a truck stuff. And they won't deliver, like Susan said, uh, they won't deliver if there's uh, grass involved. So there's something that's going on. Any idea how much that's going to? Cost, labor, and material wise? Labor and material is like $1,400. And there's a line item in my budget for non highway use. So. And did you have a greater update? So? I did. So the greater I talked to Jeff today, and uh, it's all built into the boat. And it should be shipped in a few days and then it's coming across the water. So it doesn't fall off the boat, but. <laughs> 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 uh, how, how, much, how much prep happens um, once it gets here? I know uh, a lot of people are getting cars from overseas, so they land, and then it's a month of prep. He said with uh, everything that they've been doing lately, it's, there's five graders for five pounds right now that are on their way. Different for the whole country or for just for that? I didn't go into it if it was our state. He just said that they, no, Cat had five graders coming. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
and it usually takes about two weeks on the water, and it could take a week or two in the board, and then they need to be at the mall. So he, he said about a month, so on the 26th of December. So it's about a month. It's pretty impressive. It's Told us accurately last month. Well, maybe we could sell that thing to put big profit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it begs the question whether or not we should put out an uh, request for that sooner than later. I'll bet it's gone up. I mean, you might, I bet you're right. I'll bet it's gone up. <laughs> Where did we leave that RFP for the current grader? We're going to wait till the other one showed up because we left it right before Thursday. I thought we were going to do a draft of the of a, of a request for bid and have it ready to roll. That's what I thought. I was going to a draft. We were doing a draft. That is true. Yeah. But if he's still holding to that. Same date, you know, if we got a some confident level of it's going to come to be here in a month, probably start week tracking up the RFP. It's not on the boat yet, but yeah. <laughs> kind yeah. Of. <laughs> I wish we were ordered final. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Things got a big enough reserve fund. Okay. Well, that's good news. And Brian will have that for us next. Let's put it on the um, agenda sheet too. Yep, I've got it. Yeah. yeah. Just two things. Um, the greater the other town that have been interested, in still interested. And uh, I was also talking to Jeff about Nesbitt. Going back and forth. I'm not standing away. Could you move up to the microphone? <laughs> <laughs> Just start Let's yelling. Chair right up there. Yeah, I talked to Jeff, uh, the salesman at Milton Cat, about an excavator just to get some numbers, and uh, he gave me some numbers, and I can pass them along to the board just to see uh, from what we pay for rentals and what uh, lease to own would cost. It would be a seven-year lease to own, and it would be twenty-five hundred dollars more a year than what we spend right now in rentals to buy one with a lease to own. I'm not that, saying we that's a track excavator. That's a track excavator. And we, we would need to buy a trailer to transport it, yeah. right? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's not talk about that right now. Let's let's pay Jason more. Budget. Up. Good budget. We already discussion. have numbers. Why don't you get numbers to us for your next report? We can talk about it then. Um, During budget season. let's put let's put um, that on the agenda too. The excavator? Yeah. <laughs> So you said you had two things, Jason? Oh, yeah, the other town is still interested. Oh, yeah. Cool. With regard to the excavator, um, have you talked to them at all about a rubber tire versus a track? <laughs> <laughs> I did uh, a previous road foreman uh, rented one, a rubber tire excavator. It didn't work so good for stability and what we do. Uh, we had it for a week and it was kind of awkward. Uh, it'd be great for like a paved road or something wider because of the tail swing and stuff. It takes a pretty good amount of swing for it. The excavator that he quoted out is comparable to our backhoe size wise because it works good if we keep one lane open. Uh, again, that would be a, another meeting. I can give everybody uh, information on the price and what my thoughts are, why we do it or not do it. And one, one thing we have to bear in mind on our excavator is I believe that it's a shared piece of equipment between the town and village stuff. It's the back of it. It's 80% uh, town, 20% village. Okay. Um, the other thing that would be interesting is what our actual cost. So if we know that a seven year lease would be, you know, how long, whatever that number ends up being, what our actual costs have been over the past seven years. That would be, and at the end of that seven year period, what happens with the lease that we're using? It's at least to purchase, so we own it after the seven years. Oh, uh, yeah. So, okay, it's a lease term. And so the, you're, you're not paying something at the end of the lease terms in order 
additional in order to own it. We do own it at the end of that seven year. Seven eight payments. Yeah, and this would be a this would I can only really give a the last three years, uh, three or four years we've been renting them constantly versus what we did in the past. Just uh, you know, the back when we didn't ditch nowhere near uh, the amount that we ditch now to get everything okay. caught up. Fair enough. That's easy enough to calculate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, plan purchases. All right, we've got two for plan purchases. Uh, the dollar amount for the stone wasn't available on Friday, uh, but I have it now that it will be uh, approximately ten thousand dollars. That's right. Uh, that's stone specifically for uh, our two in progress. Uh, Grant projects, Glenway Lane and Fox Lot. What size stone? Is he good? <laughs> Sorry, that's easier. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the five eight inch minus stone that they have for the ditching, and I got I give them Brian the exact numbers uh, that we already have into the grants what we went over with Rob. It was twenty five hundred for Glenway, and then uh, seventy five hundred for Fox Lawn. And I, they work out to be about four hundred and some odd dollars a load. So I rounded up to five hundred just for. That's you know I don't know if they're going to have the exact tons on every load, but just a rough number. Are you transporting the stone with town trucks? Yep. Is it coming out of Osh? It coming out of Percy's. And, Percy's brings it, they backhaul stuff now, so they bring it from their Morseville pit right down to NATO. Uh, do, you, do you need a motion to approve this? Ah, uh, I think so. Yeah. The culverts, are those for grant projects? Because I thought we already purchased the $15,000 for culverts this year. Uh, these are for grant projects. And those in our budget. Fifteen thousand was that times for last year's budget, correct? Yeah, we still got fifteen thousand. So we haven't spent anything out of this year. That was an FY twenty one, twenty two. Yeah, it uh, was just in the summer of twenty two. It was in the spring, and we should. Yeah, spring. <clears throat> sorry, probably should have bought a lot more because they've gone up a hundred dollars a culvert now. Gotcha. Uh, but I. Believe that all these were for the grant projects. This wasn't for stock. All these 24 inch culverts for this and the are the previous ones that Brian emailed and let know about in this is for grant work. Do we source like look for multiple quotes for these things for the culverts specifically? $100 is a lot. Honestly, get them from Farm and Garden because they're they deliver them and most every town around gets them from them just for uh, accessibility and uh, usually what they have for quantities. But I can. I'd be interested in that. We should check things like that. I'm not doubting that they went up. No, well, we got last year's but... prices. That's when I talked to right. everybody this spring. It was, right. I think Trevor gave us last year's prices if we bought that many this spring. Right. And they were. They were going up. That's that's the new number now after COVID. That's the reason for the number. I suspect that Farm and Garden is giving us a pretty reasonable price, but I don't disagree with you that we should at least seek alternate estimates to on the spot check and reality check. I mean, we're supposed to do that. It's one of your orders anyway, right? Some source. Yeah, it makes me think about the um, salt that we got from a Canadian vendor. Like, I like the idea of buying things locally, but if we're going to save it, you know, ourselves and taxpayers a boatload of money, then we should be looking more wide. If we buy quantities, we probably would, we would say. It, it seems to me that's the kind of thing that. <clears throat> Brian calls up five parts, going in one so 20 culverts, you can put material in a tractor trailer, or 
Part two. That's why the rest of the world has kind of like But we could. That is one thing that um, the Transportation Advisory Committee was certainly trying to get off the ground was group, you know, multiple town group purchasing efforts. Brian, have you attended TAC meetings lately or Jason? Has that been a discussion? That hasn't been a discussion lately, but it hasn't been a discussion for quite some time, but I can bring it up again. No, it'd, be a, it'd be a great topic of discussion because I, I suspect if we bought a trailer log, we could probably realize some pretty significant savings in every town is visible. Yeah. Well, even the village. So. No, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, just for all, all of our supplies. Yeah. Yeah, we can. See, I know check that, into it a little bit and then we looked into them in the past so it was the, the shipping cost that offset it enough for it but if we fill off the quantities like I suggested it would probably make more sense so. okay so you'll take that yeah um would you like the motion yeah i'll second it there you go no, it's not good enough. Motion to approve plan purchases. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Just as a, as a basic question, Jason, are you the alternate uh, to the Transportation Advisory Committee? Yes, you are. Okay. Do you ever go to the meetings? I haven't made it to one yet. I would love to go at some point. I, I, I would highly recommend that you do because some, you know, some, and I know that at one point they were trying to get a, a road foreman group together. Pre COVID, that was pretty successful. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Rob's, I don't know if post COVID, if Rob has gotten anything like that together for you. Not that I received okay. any emails from him. Seems you, like you would have if he was did. doing it. Yeah. Seems like that would be a good time to bring up again as a tech meeting. Yeah, I'll bring you with me to the next one and we'll talk to Rob about it. Yeah, he had gotten it off the ground. It was very successful, but I knew that they weren't meeting during the height of the pandemic. There wasn't a lot of interest in Zoom meetings for that group. But it kind of fell by the wayside. Okay, uh, next up is the community development block grant for Dennis process. Okay, so I've got details and documents for you on the changes for Dennis promise. The first set, starting on page packet page six. Uh, for those first three, that really outlines all of our uh, obligations uh, for continuing with the uh, community development block grant. Uh, a lot of this will be conducted through LCPC. Two of the things that we have to deal with, one we have to deal with right now is the uh, MP1 form, which is following. Uh, that's the municipal policies and codes. That's item number one. Uh, where you will in the future, the not too distant future, uh, I wanna bring your attention to item number nine on page seven. Uh, we will have to uh, get a written opinion from the town's attorney. Um, that everything that we have set up is, is true and binding. So that's more background on kind of everything going on with our oversight and our involvement with the community development block grant for the rehabilitation of the 
Coffee House by Jenna's Promise. All right. Our actual request tonight. So are you calling the fraud the coffee house for a reason? But specifically talks about the Silver River project. And Silver, so I mean, I just want to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. I, it, there is in the same building. And is that what you mean when you say the coffee shop? Yes. You're talking about the building. Okay. Yes, it, it is rehab for the building. I suppose I'm calling it the coffee shop just for my. What I think of the building as is getting back to the coffee shop. Um, our specific request tonight is that municipal, municipal policies and codes. This starts on page nine and is a few pages long. So these are different than policies that have been adopted in the past or other community development projects? It is a statement that we have policies and or abide by each of these headings. So that we are an equal employment opportunity. Uh, so we are certifying that it is the policy and practice of this municipality that, to assure that no person will be discriminated against or denied benefit of any activity, program, employment process, et cetera. There's a few specifics here. I guess my question is, I, I know that these kind of policies have been adopted in the past. Are these, are there, have there been changes that we now need to re-adopt these policies or? This is a, uh, we're certifying that we have adopted and follow these practices and policies. That we are an equal opportunity employer, that we participate in fair housing. Fair housing is a little bit long. Um, it talks about excessive use of force, which we don't have a police department, so it doesn't really apply to us. The sheriff's department does have one, but this is our certification of what we have, and we don't have one because we don't have. Do we have a fair housing policy? I don't think we do. A what? A fair housing policy. I hope we did. We were in those. There are. I have not seen a policy on that. I've never known of a town policy on fair housing. There's certainly state policies or laws. Do we need a town policy on that? Is that what this is telling us we need to have in which case? As I understand it, As I understand it, we are we have to we don't need a policy, but we have to abide by fair housing standards. And it is our practice to abide by fair housing standards. We have been a landlord, but we have not sought tenants in a long time, so we haven't had any discussion about how to seek landlords and how to conduct a fair process. This is a contract that we're signing. This is not about do we have a policy. This is about this is the contract that we agree to these terms and a group of terms is about equal employment policy, their policy, not ours, the Vermont Community Development Program's policy, not Johnson's. So we need to make sure that none of our policy conflicts with their policy because this is the contract we're going into with them. The same is true of the fair housing, sorry, it's just been an occurring to click. Same is true with a fair housing policy. Like these are, contractual things we are agreeing to as a term of the contractual conditions for this um, grant program. 
So any money spent from this grant program must abide by these rules. Okay. Is this federal? Yes. Must be federal. Okay. Their money is passed. So because I'm just looking at the drug free workplace act. There's some drugs that are legal and some not. Okay. Are you okay. sure this is federal? Well, this contract we have yeah. is with the Vermont Community, Community Development Program. The funds they receive are probably federal. There. Yes. Most of the vast majority. The protected classes does not have vestment status. All through here, Maybe. it has quite a list of different protected classes, but uh, I'm not even sure if that's all inclusive. I mean, the thing is, we should, we don't need to get feedback on that, I don't think. I think we just need to make sure that all of these terms are contractual terms we can abide by. It'd be nice if we could push back to make them all. Make them what? Make them all for these. We don't want to. Oh, except Eric. Well, no. <laughs> Eric can call them. But we can discriminate <laughs> against veterans now. Mm -hmm. I, my point is, I think we've already signed one of these when we've done other, like the. The, the town has signed a yeah. number of these over the years. This is a. Did you might sign one of this? This is a form provided by. The state of Vermont for a number of uh, a number of non a number of grants. We I think have only received it for non highway grants. But the thing I the only thing I'm worried about with this, frankly, is um, that this is a contract the town is signing in order to receive grant funding, and that grant funding is going to Jenna's promise. So our is Jenna's promise signing a fair housing exact replica of this? Like, do they have their own contract? They have their own contract. I don't know if it's an exact replica. We should really make sure it is because we should not be agreeing to any of these terms if Jenna's promise hasn't already signed a contract with the Vermont Development Program and probably with us. Like, I feel like this stuff, if we're signing this stuff, we need to look it back and say, you know, we're, we're agreeing to this contract to receive this grant fund money. We need you to agree to all these same terms that we're agreeing to on your behalf. Jenna's promise is a sub-recipient of... Yes. So any sub-recipient would have to agree to abide by the terms and conditions that the town is <clears throat> agreeing to as part of their grant agreement? I don't challenge you, but I don't see it. So I see it. My request for that would be, I know that it, that exists, uh, would be for the board to authorize Beth or myself to sign this on production of that uh, subrecipient grant, grant agreement with. Looks like it requires full board. It does look like it looks like. Oh, board. you're right. <laughs> yeah, I can't sign this one. You're right. To your, your point, Beth, I mean, the, the preamble, the very first uh, paragraph says that the town of Johnson has adopted the following policies and codes. Uh, and I, I don't know that by just signing it. I know that we have. I know that those exist. They probably exist in the file on uh, the CDBG grant that the town got for uh, the, mar the market. Um, I, I know it was done. Um, but we, it's, it's, it's different to sign something that says we have these policies without actually verifying that we have the policies. Yeah, yeah that would be kind of important. Yeah. I mean, do we have a no texting and driving policy somewhere? Why not? No. I don't think we've got anything written for that.
<laughs> no, it's hard enough for me to text. There's a lot of apps yeah. to bring it up. Well, I suppose a blind way that I could skin this cat would be each and every each and every one of these things in here specifically refers to the the uh, code of federal registries by number and by um, yeah, by number. We could say that we hereby adopt the following policies and codes, you know, as identified in this document as the policy is the official policy of the town of Johnson, which would then mean that we have the texting code because it's identified. Because if you ask me where to find the policies and our policy, you won't find it. And you won't you won't find any of these in the in the booklet. No. You'll find some of them, mm -hmm. but not you will not find these words. And if we were to do something like that, I think we need to be careful that we are not, we have a whistleblower protection policy, for example. Um, mm -hmm. that's easy to point out, we do. Yes, um, we do. So that's we would just need to make sure that that needs to, it's in the packet, that needs to make, not conflict with what we have. Um, the other thing I think we could do, I think, although I'm not an attorney, uh, I think we could all change the text here at the top that you printed out, the preamble that you were pointing to, Duncan, and say um, agrees to the following policies and codes instead of and strike out has adopted and we could all put our initials beside it. I think that could work. I don't know if it would be accepted. But so, so I think that we could strike has adopted, insert, agrees to, and we could all initial it and see if it's accepted or not. No, by, by slashing out, by slashing out has adopted and just saying agrees to the following policies and codes, it just directs everyone to adopt. Right. And okay, we agree to for this it. contract, we agree to turn it. Asking Brian, do you have the subrecipient agreement yeah. document? Not um, not printed or on hand. It exists in our. Uh, it it exists in our folder for the records and documents for this grant agreement, but I I can't right now produce a copy of it. So this feedback that you got from them was um, you submitted this on their wonderful online yes. program and, and you sort of got this feedback from them, this initial few pages. Um, actually, this is all still connected to the redesignation of that change that they had made from Change, Jenna's change, promise change. to the other one that we have signed this agreement for this grant previously. We just need to sign it again. I say we do that. I say we strike out as adopted and I'll ensure that we go sign it. Is that a motion? Yeah. I'll second that motion. But just for clarity, your, your motion would be to strike adopted and replace it with agrees with? My, my motion is to strike has adopted and replace, replace with agrees to the following. Agrees to. Well, I'll wait to strike it through. Um, there's a typo here. And we have a motion in a second. Okay. Any discussion? All those. In I, I'm only going to say that I, I will vote in favor of the motion, but I strongly believe that it will not be accepted. I'll find out. Okay. 
Uh, all those in favor, start to say aye. 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 So your name? No, I'm a yes or no. It's okay. not. <laughs> so you are we're going to sign one that you're going to. I can. Right. This copy. Oh, please hold. Of course, they may never know. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, to move on while you're signing before and passing that release, I think we should give her a food voucher for her trip. <laughs> <laughs> Is that just going down the line? Is that that free? Oh, line? goodness. <laughs> Enjoy it. Where is she going to? Only more. more. Do they have a Mickey D's down in, uh, oh, down in Fairly? Like, like where are you? Are you going to have to wait till you have? Oh, wait, Okay. All right. Um, the rec coordinator position. Um, Are you guys done with that? Yep, we're done. Yeah. Here. Thank you, Rosemary. Have fun. Have fun. I have a suggested motion. I don't know if that helps. Or not. No texting and driving. Okay, I won't. Slow and steady. Thank you, Rosemary. No. I so the board had directed me to negotiate for an, and I'm going to get the text of this wrong, but the town had, had the board had authorized me and asked me to uh, go to Dean Block with certain conditions uh, for employment. Dean is expressed his interest in accepting those conditions in writing. Uh, does the board wish to accept? I'd like to make a motion. And I'm, I've written it down and I'm going to hand it around for everybody. And there should be an extra copy if Dean wants to see a copy of it. Dean, would you like a copy? This whole thing's not a motion. Right? This whole thing is, yeah, my, well, it and is. I can provide this. I can provide this to. I can provide yeah, this to, uh, to to Donna as well. But my motion would be thank you to make a written offer of employment to Dean Locke for the position as recreation coordinator, as per draft letter of Brian, with the following modifications and additions. Um, should I go through them one by one? Yes. Okay. So in paragraph one of the draft letter, I am suggesting, or my motion is to strike the second sentence of this and include the job description because the job description states that the hire reports to the select board under the supervision of the town administrator. So I think if the job description is included as part of the packet, that sentence doesn't need to be in there. Paragraph two, add to the end of the sentence, not the send of the sentence, as per job description, as per attached job description. Paragraph three, add a statement that employment is based on a maximum of 1,248 hours annually, but that the hours may be flexible from one week to the next as required by the program needs. We, we talked about that, but it wasn't part of my actual motion at the last board meeting. But I think it's important to get in the offer that the prospective employee understands that some weeks it might be 16 hours and other weeks it might be 30 hours. But that the total, it's based on 24 hours a week for 52 weeks. Can you just pause there for one second? Sorry, yes. I know you're in the middle of the motion, but um, Donna, I just sent you a picture of what this is has the text changed at all from what you know other than the typo i, I have a typo send versus and <laughs> and i can i can send her i got it the language keep reading i'm gonna send down i'm gonna send you the text too in paragraph four um i wanted it to be very clear that any information as to town contributions and benefits 
our estimates and the actual benefits will be based on pro rata costs and contributions as set annually by the select board. The pro rata cost for health insurance is based on a ratio of 24 hours to 30 hours, but the dental insurance is based on a pro rata share of 24 to 40 hours. And I believe you should check with Rosemary to make sure, because I couldn't make your numbers come out right on the dental piece. Okay. I'm thinking you've also used the, the same ratio. I could have, I'll have to double check. For dental. But, but I, would, I would highly recommend that you double check with Rosemary on any of those. In any case, I think it's really important to note that those are estimates. The actual benefits will be based on, you know, an annual uh, update by the town um, on those benefits. Um, paragraph five is fairly simple change company to town in a statement that adjustments and salary may be, may be made by the select board as part of their normal budgetary operation. Um, paragraph six, I would recommend changing the language slightly to say employees are subject to and benefit from the adopted personnel policy, a copy is attached. I would recommend that the last page of the personnel policy has a signature page for the employee, which is simply, it's not that they agree with or disagree with the policy, it's just that they've received a copy of the policy. And I, I would like to see that returned and included in the personnel file. Um, paragraph six, uh, I'm sorry, paragraph seven, add a paragraph about Vermont Municipal Employment uh, Retirement System. It's important to note that, that if it's a 24 hour a week position, which we discussed and approved, it's mandatory to belong to BMERS. It's not a choice, it's mandatory. And to specify what the employee contribution is and what the town, in, town employer contribution is and also to indicate the plan that they're involved to provide a little bit of information. It's also important to note that the employee can elect a defined contribution plan as opposed to a defined benefit plan. That's an employee choice. So the employee needs to be you know, aware of, of that as an option. Uh, I think it's important to note that the town has a cafeteria plan uh, especially if, you're, if uh, the employee is taking uh, the insurance benefit because the cafeteria plan allows contribution, uh, you know, payroll deductions to be pre-tax. Um, so I think you know, that's an important piece. The town does offer long-term disability plan. That should be included. Um, and the town offers a, a series of voluntary benefits, voluntary benefits, uh, such as they can belong to AFLAC. There's a voluntary vision plan and there's a supplemental retirement plan offered through Beamers um, that the employee may be um, eligible to uh, participate in at their sole discretion and at their full cost. Uh, and the offer of employment should be subject to background checks. I can't remember if that was done or not, but. Uh, Dean is currently serving as our. Hold on one second. That's the motion. That's the motion. Give me on the table a second. Okay, discussion. Uh, I just want to say really quickly that um, it would be wise for all involved not to have any discussion about anything related to a negotiation. If there's clarification, let's make those clarifications and end it there. Um, so if we do need to have a negotiation discussion or about changing anything that's been offered, we need to go into executive session for that. Yep. I guess for me, the uh, offer of employment letter, in my mind, is too specific. And I would have, I guess I wouldn't support adding all of this language to it, what, what I would have supported is 
references to personnel policy, references to the job description, and not getting into the details because when that letter of uh, offer of employment is provided and it's negotiated and it's signed by town and employee, then it's a contract and they can say, well, no, wait a minute. You said you would always contribute 90% to my health insurance and then now you're saying you're going to do 85. So that's why I wouldn't have gotten into any of those specifics. I would have just referenced and I guess um, that's why I did second motion just to get it on the floor. I wouldn't support putting all of this language into it. So are you suggesting a friendly amendment? Yes, but I do not have anything currently in the wording, but um, you know. Do you need a copy of the letter? Yeah, it does. Yeah. We, do, we must do this every time we hire a new employee. We must have a contract. It's got pretty much all your stuff here. Don't have contracts. There's we don't have contracts on um, most of this stuff. Uh, and maybe we should have held on to Rosemary for another minute or two. A lot, most of this stuff is handled by Rosemary when she does the signs people up for benefits, handles the, that paperwork, does the uh, citizenship check. Uh, Background check. Uh, the background checks I actually do, and we normally do those as a condition of an offer of employment. Dean is currently serving as our uh, health officer and so has passed a background check for us recently. So I, I, I would recommend that we don't run another one. They're not, they're not that expensive, but they're not free. Uh, and he's past one recently for other purposes. Eric, maybe everything behind seven, number seven gets dropped. Mm -hmm. so, you know, seven through 10 gets dropped to your point about benefits. It, to include seven or not to include seven? To exclude seven through 10. That's a rough, everything I would eliminate and just reference personnel policies. Job ah, so you're not gonna make it, you're not gonna um I, I can make that a friendly amendment and show it to Duncan. If it helps, the, the paragraph where we get into where I got into a lot of the numbers was a response to a specific question. Which, which and I prefaced all of that with <laughs> estimated that these were estimated values. And I, I didn't get into details about why these were estimates, not guaranteed numbers. But that's an appropriate conversation to have with me or any applicant when this offer of employment letter being negotiated. It's just putting it in the writing. That's what makes me nervous. The PP is personnel policy. Yeah. I guess I'm not to agree to it anyway. Oh, he's so patient with holding his hand up. Hold on, Jack. Hold on, Jack. Hold on, Jack. I feel like there's a lot more than just about to transpire. He's going to patiently wait to it. Hey, Mark. You promised the beginning of the summer pizza. Select for pizza. I never saw one slice. You weren't here. It was you weren't here. There was one select for pizza. One time? Mm he -hmm. was practically shoving it. I wasn't here either. I was trying to push it up. See, the two most important people were here. Eric showed up and said, oh, I can stay in. Well, I didn't know you were pushing it. I didn't see it. So, under. Are we, are we discussing a friendly, a proposed friendly amendment? That's what is happening, yes. Okay, so my number two simply says um, at the end of at the end of this paragraph, say as per attached job description. So I think that's consistent with what you're saying. Okay. 
Um, the hourly wage is is what we talked about. That needs to be in there because Just that's tough. part of the contract. And I, I think the number, of, I think the work week is an important. The total number of hours annually, in, in I, I think we talked about it at the at the meeting about it being important to differentiate differentiate it between a twenty four and less than twenty four hours. So I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be firm on that one. Um, of course, you all may not agree, but that's fine. I mean, I, I'm. I think I think the Beamer stuff is important um, because that is not you know the personnel policy says we'll offer a Beamer's plan. Um, I guess to my point that I said earlier, if it's in this contract, you know, this is a legal document that we're signing with the off of employment, and he gets hired, he take he accepts it. And then he can come back and say, well, wait a minute, you signed this off of employment that guaranteed me. I would have proposed that we go into executive session. Uh, we are we are literally negotiating the terms of employment right now. We are. The letter's already been sent. The letter itself is public record. But I think that we're talking about other pieces of negotiating terms of employment. Um, I guess I would ask, do others agree? I, I would not. You would not agree? No, I, I do not think, no, I want to change any of the negotiated agreement. It's just how off of employment is sent by the Can I see your again? Are we going to vote on this? Well, we have a motion second. Now we've got a, an amendment. And if it's not friendly, second. then the motion would die. They're still working out the amendment. Yeah, we're still working on it. The amendment doesn't have a second. Do you guys work quickly here or let it die? Um, uh, we need to vote it down. It's already an active motion right now. So you can let the friendly amendment die. Yeah, because it's yeah, right. Second. And it can also go as a not as a friendly amendment, just a proposed amendment, right. which would require a second. Would require a second and a vote. This is your amendment. This is just for the offer of employment. Well, one thing that's not in the personnel policy is what a copy of the policy is. Is it in the personnel policy that the select board will review on an annual basis? I'll put some money down. Benefits um, provided. <laughs> Oh, what was your question, Duncan? Does the personnel policy currently, one of my concerns with the, the whole estimate thing is that it should be clearly stated that those are just estimates, that the board annually reviews uh, the benefits, the health insurance benefits that are available and approved. Um, and therefore they would be subject to those, not, you know, to your point, it wouldn't be any guarantee that those estimates are what you get. It would be what is annually approved by the board. Just do you do you remember off the top of your head of personnel policy? Not says that. Not to that level of specificity. Um, 
So I think that's important. And I think it's important for any employee to know. It is once they're hired, like all the hours they need to know because they're committing to a, If somebody's committing to a job, they need to know the hours are going to work. They need to know the rate of pay. And they, yeah, you can tell them all the benefits that are available. But it's just a list. Like, Currently. Like when I'm hired, they could be I changed. literally have a list of this is what we offer. And every single company and municipality in the whole world benefits change. It happens all the time. So I don't we don't need to list it out in the letter. We need to list it out. It needs to be understood as part of the onboarding. I mean, I was literally just hired from a, to a new company in April, and I did not have every detail of my benefits outlined. I had a list of the benefits that were offered. That was it. Like, I could ask as many questions as I wanted, but it was not part of my offer letter. Well, how, how did you receive the list? Uh, I had an email that texted to me about it. A lot of really good communications or creative communicating. Either, either, either emailed or texted, but it was just a list. And your offer of employment made no reference at all to the benefits being offered? The offer, the letter itself listed what my annual salary would be, the expected hours that I would work, the holidays that were provided that could change, and other terms of employment. That and also that I received health insurance and those kinds of things, but it didn't go into detail. I had no idea what the health insurance plans were until I accepted what the plan details were. I had opportunity to ask questions about them, which I did, um, but I didn't know the details about them until after I was onboarded. You can ask as many questions as you want, it's not part of your offer letter, though. That's certainly not how I have dealt with offer of employment letters in the past. Um, so you know, I think there's probably different ways of doing it. I, I'll put it this way. I do not accept it as a friendly motion. If somebody wants to, if you want to make it as an amendment and somebody seconds it, we can vote on the amendment. My proposal stands for an up and down vote. There's already a document out there that has been returned. It's not overly far from your amendment. Proposed amendments to a document that's already been returned. I'll take a point. I just want to get rid of anything specific. Well, part of my concern with the with the document is I don't believe that the specific estimates that were provided are accurate. Based oh, on okay, the yeah, so they might not be accurate and they literally say estimated. And then there's a number and then it says estimated and there's a number. So if it's an estimate and they're within the ballpark, I would say that's pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. If it's estimated just I, right i don't estimated. believe the dental is even within the ballpark it's estimated regardless i don't i don't think we need a motion yet that's where we i'm have saying an active, we have an active motion. Uh, well, so are we ready to vote with no friendly amendment right with no friendly okay. amendment unless we would like to amend and then we can get a second you could withdraw your second okay I'll Make this is a motion to amend. We have a second on a motion to amend. I, I guess I'm not really clear on what this is. <laughs> um, so, yeah, sure. No, I'll take a picture. Sorry, I can't copy and paste this one, Donna. I'll send you a picture. It's basically editing the letter. And it is okay. And then, did we have a second? We have a second. So, we have a change of motion. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment? Any questions about saying aye? Uh, point of order. Sorry. We, I think we had a time for this discussion. I think we're going to start. I don't want to interrupt here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all those in favor of the amendment? Aye. All those opposed? 
Nej. Nej. So we have our original motion out there. Um, are we ready to vote? Or do you want, is there more to discuss? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't vote the way you wanted. Sorry, I'm actually not that sorry. Okay, no more to discuss. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Oh, the original amendment which is the page that Doug has submitted. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Obviously, I have to say aye. You don't have to. And I want that kitty would vote against it. So. <laughs> I would too. But I would. I'll vote in favor. It's not even here anymore, and you're still giving him Wait, takes so on it. You're an I, Duncan? I'm an I. And you're an I? Okay. All those opposed? Nay. nay. I'm also a nay. So the motion fails. The motion fails. Okay. Now what? Hey, guys, I'm I'm a little bit confused about about what what all just happened there. So the motion to amend passed with only the motion to amend failed. Okay. So who, who voted for and against that one? Um, I voted for. Uh, Duncan and Eric voted for, I'm sorry. Eric and Mark voted for the amendment. Duncan and Evan voted against it. And then I also voted against it to break the tie. Okay. And then the original motion held and Duncan and Eric voted for it. And the three of us remaining voted against it. Okay, thanks. Sorry, it was a lot. There's this testing our skills. That's the most confusing one I've ever. Yeah, it was confusing. Okay, so now um, we have this letter with a response from Dean. Is there more to discuss? I, I would like to just state for the record that my original motion at the last board meeting, as well as I remember it, was to make an offer of employment based on 1950 an hour for a 24 hour work week um, with the personnel policy issues. Um, you know, any deviations from the personnel policies identified um, and to have that proposal brought back to the board for review and approval. And I, I understand that Brian took that to mean that he could send the uh, written authorization uh, to Dean and Dean signed it. Um, but I don't think that comports with the motion that I made. Okay, noted. I, well, I hope it's noted. Donna, do you have any questions? Nope. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. This is the chair. Um, although we have not approved the new minutes, your actual motion was Duncan moved to authorize Brian to negotiate and bring back a written offer of employment letter to do based on 24 hours per week and the town's duly adopted personnel policy at 19.15 per hour with a six month probationary period. They're seconded and the motion is passed. Basically, I didn't paraphrase that. Okay. Thank you. So, how would we like to proceed? I think if he's coming back to the board for approval of a motion to approve. Approve what? The draft that was sent out? The return letter signed by Dean Law on whatever date, September 19th. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Because it's ours. We've got a lot of handwriting on it. We'll yeah. have to. The, that's, so forget all handwriting. That's all handwriting, all handwriting is out the door now. Okay. 
I'll second it. They're on the edge of their chair. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I'll, I'll just say that any of the discussion that did happen prior, it's not a reflection on how I think the team should be providing the job. I just didn't agree with the particular way. Thank you. I have a second that summer. Okay. And because of that, I'll hold it. Um, Dean, do you have any questions about what's happening here? I mean, I'm sure you do, but. <laughs> yeah, uh... yeah, 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 probably. Yeah, it's about, you know, I already learned from Jason, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, currently right now, I, I, the only questions I got are going to be, you know, moving forward with the position and learning it and uh, getting to uh, know what needs to get done and getting it done. Um, I, I, I do take to your point, Duncan, on the specifics. And that was kind of the, that was not offered. It was asked and requested by me for Brian to give me that information so that I could just know everything about it so that me and my wife could look at the benefits package and understand that a little bit and whether you know and make some choices and decisions that way so it was just kind of a way for us to be fully informed as much as possible on that so um otherwise than that um no all right great thank you thanks for coming up the mic okay we have a motion and we have a second um any further discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye all right all those opposed nay ayes have it phew Agenda item number three. <laughs> That's the assessor update. Assessor update. Yes. Oh, uh, it's going to be very quick. Um, uh, Ron uh, has been doing most of the like, work on this. He's been on vacation in Maine. He's coming back this coming week. We plan to get together. So at this point, I really don't. I can tell you that Hyde Park, Johnson, and Wolcott are interested. City of Virginia is still interested, as far as I know. But that's about all I can tell you. Don't have anything specific. Thank you. Okay, that sounds good. Um, and that we're running about an hour behind. Yep. I'm proposing number seven moves up. Uh, number seven moves up, and uh, number five potentially moves to the end. I don't. I think reviewing the candidates for the economic developer service is going to take a while, so we might strike five. Okay, so let's. Uh, we're gonna strike five, but uh, it would be after an executive session, potentially at like 11 o'clock. Okay. I'd say, I'd say that's let's, worthy of work session. Let's uh, it wouldn't be a strike, it would be a potentially postponed. Sorry, I, I don't mean to like strike it. Table, let's move number seven up. Um, yes, let's that's do that for us. Start. So we want to go to and hold on, hold on, hold on. Number oh, 10 up uh, with the public works operator evaluation form and uh, potential fifth employee. Yeah. Um, I feel like we should actually push a couple of these things out, but I do not believe it should be the economic developers personally. That will. Sure, can we talk about that after seven and 10? Let's follow our agenda after and uh, while we're talking seven to 10. I'll actually, look at more. Yep, okay. It's actually going to be fine up too, so we can get Lisa out of here. So I'm going on to item seven. number seven next. Yep. So uh, discussion of the status of a fifth public works employee position. Um, kind of this is at this point to kind of assess what does the board need in order to make a decision on a fifth public works position um we've got we've got it into our budget but we know that employee costs uh and other things have gone up more than that so uh it's a little bit underfunded in our current budget, but we're also not starting that position from 
uh, at the beginning of the year. You know, we'd be hiring if we, even if we decided tonight to post for the job, we'd be, you know, at least a month out before we're hiring for it. So that would be a few months less than the total year that we had estimated for it. Um, that could potentially, if this board decided to vote this way, get somebody familiar with Florida in the middle of winter. That would be the desire, it is to, um, If we're hiring into uh, October or November, we've got a little bit more freedom in the type of person that we hire because they won't be thrown in day one uh, to snow plowing in some of the most difficult parts of the job. Uh, Are you just looking for a temperature check on the board? Most, mostly, and first of all, yeah, a temperature check on the board. What uh, we, you said we would be underfunded, but you just said you didn't say how much. You said a little. What does that mean? It depends on the experience of the person that okay. we hire. And Ballpark it. What are we talking? No, no, not and. Not and. Ballpark it. What are we talking? I think that we're, I think that we're in a good spot right now uh, because we've got we haven't spent the money for the first couple of months. So if we estimated the position at a, we did estimate the position at a kind of low to medium skill level uh, with low experience. Um, we have an extra two months of salary uh, or more than two months of salary. Uh, to add to that rate so that even if we hired somebody who was more expensive and even if costs did go up higher than we expected, we have a couple months that we didn't spend the money. How much money did we budget? Do we have in the budget? Like forget how much somebody could cost. Jason, go ahead. I just want to say that we haven't had a person since, or a fifth person since last July 29th. It's been over a year. Understood. But how much money are we talking in the budget? that we have right now that could go for toward that person. I'm sorry, I don't have that number. Okay. So that's one of the things that the board wants. Well, yeah, that's one of the things we need to yep. understand. Can I also just suggest that when we continue our discussion about the remaining surplus, <coughs> that we do not have to reserve every dollar of that we, we could leave some of that on the table, which could then be available to us to offset costs of an employee or anything else. Right? I, I agree with you, but I think we need freedom to move money around. Inflation is going, healthcare benefits is going to be the board. That's the what did you want to say, Evan? I was going to say that we're asking Brian to pinpoint uh, what money is freed up, but we're still in union contract negotiations. So to actually pinpoint that number is completely unrealistic because we don't have a contract with the union employees. And so we That's could. Fair. In the current budget we're in, we built a year ago. We didn't know January 1st we're going to be going up to 15% oh, for the health insurance cost. We need budget for that. And we still don't have a number on what we negotiated the increase in some of the movement. So we get the food barriers. But there is also budget. The 600 hours of part time employee that was carried, which is kind of also hold over. We've received one application, and we've heard from a couple other people that they'd be interested, and we'll see if that interest actually materializes if there's a job availability. Okay, just it the way things are right now is not thinking that we're going to have somebody in October. But if we had 
somebody in mind, then I said, right. we have one person who's actually submitted an application. You know, at the end of the day, I think it really comes down to a decision of do we advertise a position or not? Because if we got somebody that was highly qualified and seemed to be the ideal candidate, and we had to put them into the wage scale in a little higher place, we might want to make that decision. That might be the most prudent thing that we could do. Um, so, you know, to your point and with the Brian's point, it's hard to ballpark what the impact, what the budgetary impact on that is going to be. Because um, hopefully we would pick the best person for the job mm -hmm. rather than the low, you know, the low ball. So, with your statement, are you supportive of the employee? I think that's the big one, Brian. I think it's the one he's looking for. I, you know, yeah, I, I think I am. Um, too early. Too early. I'm supportive of the employee. Um, I think I am, but I don't want to say that I am fully supportive at this point. Just be, yeah. You have some specific questions that you want answered. I would like those specific questions answered about what we know about budget right now. I would yeah. also like to know. Uh, and I need to go back and look because I don't remember the exact conversation, but we talked a little bit at one point, there was a mention in passing recently over the summer months about um, the idea of having somebody come in part-time fifth employee, but there was something very specific about it. And it wasn't the part-time employee we're talking about that hasn't been working very much. There was something else and I can't put my finger on what it was. Um, but I felt like it would be a win-win for you, Jason and crew, uh, and whatever the circumstance was, but I need to go back and look. So in theory, I'm for it, but I wanna make sure that we're not putting a burden on our budget because of all of our unknowns. I think we have too many unknowns. Mark? Yeah, I feel like I'm looking in the room tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm to zero out. In theory, I, I, think, I think it's a good idea. Okay, so more questions needed, but in theory, it's supported. And the, the specific questions that I'm going to bring back for next time, and anybody can email and, and let me know if you've got more questions. But right now, I've got to bring back details on how much is currently budgeted for that position, for the unfilled position. Yeah, and right. how much is budgeted for budget versus spend for the part time employee. Mm -hmm. Separate numbers. I don't want separate them. numbers, yeah. Because that was a big thing that Duncan and I covered, right? No part time work for employees. Yeah, my my you know when I'm going back in time when the first fifth person was first talked about and talked about a town meeting, it was going to be to help reduce the total number of hour time hours that employees were gonna to have to put in during the, particularly during the winter. Um, and it was going to obviate the need for the part-time part part employment. And somehow that seems to have not gotten in there, but you know, the part-timer continued as part of the budget process. So yeah. for me, it's important to know, I need, if, I, if we're gonna do this, I need to be able to go back to the voters and justify why we're doing it and say that it's gonna help um, provide better coverage uh, during the winter and you know, the roads are gonna be maintained better. And, uh, you know, it's, it's ultimately gonna, it's not gonna save money, but it's gonna be a cost-effective means of doing business. And would that be safe to assume less overtime? Well, do we want less overtime? We did reduce the number of overtime hours and we've, been pretty successful at it from what it was when we had strictly four employees. We have gone over <coughs> a couple years uh, on our overtime, but. Overtime is going to be dependent on the weather, I would imagine, more than anything. But yeah. Jason, what did you want to say? 
for the last couple of years uh, when we uh, had a little bit person. Uh, it was 300 hours of overtime per person before it was a bit person. Then it went down to 250. And uh, the last years of that, well, last year, especially then the year before, was monitoring it a little bit. Uh, it stayed right where we did. So last year, we were almost 300. Free for a while, a little long to right. work with everything. Uh, but it does affect not having a fifth employee effect. I don't go and meet with Brian. A lot of the foreman computer stuff. It's the time for it. Again, but I'm in a truck or an excavator or back one. So we can make do with it, but we're not in the pit either. I think the question got asked by a couple of residents why we don't use the pit. We have four people, and we have four people in the past. So, well, we had four people in the past, but we didn't move here with the ditching and other stuff that we did in the past. That was just now, it's true. We get in the pit, I never see it been able to, being able to work with four people. But what we're learning now is that when you got one person in a grader, one person in a tractor mowing, or in a four ride truck, and you got one person ditching in an excavator or a backhoe, and then one person in a truck. And most of the time, you need at least the truck for that tobacco. That's why I didn't run an uh, escalator too much this summer because the tobacco sits there. All of my wind trucks are on the track. You don't have to take those. And when people go on vacation, it gets worse. The thing that I'm just going to be totally honest with you, the thing that I have a really hard time with, like I hear you on the where do we want you to spend your time? I think it's a really good and valid point. And when we should keep asking ourselves. Um, but the other thing is, like, you and the crew do a great job getting everything done that really needs to get done. Uh, you don't always like some of the things, I get it, but you do it and you do it well. And there you go. There, so that is a problem. And above and beyond ditching, we get a lot more requests from committees. From what committees? That's it. We don't turn it away either. And the committee talked about this last time. Anytime that someone asks, we put it in. That can only sound like one week or two days here or there. Five of those requests is 10 days the summer, summer this long. So that's it. Fair enough. Specific numbers, you yes. have them written down what we're looking for. Did you have any specific requests for trying to come back with? No. If, you, if, you, if it's relatively easy to look at, it would be useful for me to see how many employees, communities of similar population and ran less staff. And I think that's available for VLCT service. Road mileage. Road, road mileage. Road, road mileage. Road mileage. Yeah. Road mileage. Road mileage. Road mileage. Uh, also, yeah. I, I don't. You know. I don't really want to know what Stowe has. Right. We don't you care. Know, Stowe's brand list is a little different than ours. Yeah. Um, it's so tough, but that is a good, good way to do it. We'd also have to take into account MRTP. And, and whether or not we want to own an operated grapple pit right. too. That's a that's a big. Um, and I know we're only three months into our budget, two and a half. Um, but what percentage of the salary on that? If we've only been doing four employees, well, I guess there should be a pretty good reserve there. Because we're also the headwind ahead of us is some kind of a salary increase. Uh, that one, I think I can actually provide. You can bring that back to the next meeting. Would yeah, we don't need to keep talking about it, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Jason, the other question I have, and I really honestly would not ask you this, except that I think you, I could see you answering it. <laughs> Do you keep track of where you spend your time? That would be interesting. I think it would be really interesting to understand where everybody on the crew spends their time if you have it. If you don't have it, don't put effort into getting it. But if you already have it, I think that would be really beneficial. Yeah, I mean, I have it written down in my book there. 
most of the time, we work in most of the different projects this summer is making dry air isolation for our homes to make sure that we're you mean like specifically areas of town or activities? Types of work. Types of work. Types of work. If you have it handwritten though, I don't know that. Right? I mean, Okay. That's the key. Yeah, I'll we were going to add more detail to the timesheets. Uh, that would be really great. That's really What's helpful it? data. And especially if it gets out of the book. Totally. All right. So I've got kind of the, the temperature of the board and some specific requests you have. So next month, I'll <clears throat> try and have those answered and we can continue the discussion on uh, what to do about the fifth employee. Okay. Great. All right. The next one we wanted to do was to go over to number 10, which was to review the public works operator evaluation form, which in is in your packet on page 87 and 88. So the last two pages. Jason, have you reviewed that as well? I saw a few copies of Brian's and previous. You may want to have a copy to. Mark, I might have to curb off yours if I need to. Um, so uh, based on feedback, this is the new uh, performance review that we can use for the public works operators. Um, you know, it, I'd heard the request about making it more based on the job description. Uh, so that's the, that was the, the central conceit that I had gone into this with. Uh, I took the bullet points out of the job description and changed them into uh, statements suitable for evaluation. When we talked about this last month, I I suggested we postpone it until this month because Eric was on. And I thought it would make a longer meeting tonight if we had him. <laughs> Clearly, we need to uninvite Eric. <laughs> My concern was: was there anything that it raised for you guys with regard to union negotiation? And I suspect no. Uh, it would be really nice if it was ten questions. Why oh, ten? Why does it matter? Because a performance review is important to be divisible by ten. <laughs> I don't think we're allowed to ask this stuff. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're at eleven. I know. Are you can ten the why? last question. If you have one, is recommend uh, gets combined or removed? Uh, number eleven. I was thinking number ten. It maintains all required licenses and certificates. Required what about combining 10 and 11? Um, both about compliance. I like it. Just 10 too. I would actually combine or eliminate uh, one and four are very similar. Okay, combine those two. All equipment, Fine. all proper procedures. Can you throw in uh, equipment in number four? So it's by safety and equipment. So yes. Yeah, combine yeah two. just combine one. The, we'll have one question about safety, and that'll make it 11 safety questions. Equipment. Just say oh, yeah. at the end of follows all blah, blah, blah. Say and operates all blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Other than that, you're happy with this. You'd be the one filling it out. Oh, yeah, it says, you know, me or Brian. I don't think I'm going to this way. They know that they can go to more than one person yeah. on number seven. Well, yeah, it does a couple of times. Yeah, pretty much every time it refers to the public work supervisor, it also includes me. Um, I don't, I, I feel like it should also include somebody who is not either of you, actually. I'd be fine expanding that out yeah. to 
or board. Well, the or personnel policy says, I believe, that the employee can go to the chair of the board as well. Uh, I, yeah, I think that. And we also have a whistleblower portion of whatever that policy is called. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Dean. Thank you, Dean. Good night. So Good night. I think we should include all of the things we identify in that uh, policy. This is just a review form. It's just a review form. It doesn't, review. But it still makes the point that it's so, an opportunity to have hard conversations. Right. So we could have like bullet points at the end if you want. Do you understand that we have a whistleblower policy? Yes or no? Good idea. Do you understand that you could talk to more than just me about this? Yes or no? Good idea. Happy with that? I no more grading, idea. just yes or no questions. Yes. I actually really do like that. Would you like to work with Brian specifically on those questions? Those no, I'm going meeting? away tomorrow. Before the next meeting, you'll be back. Probably not. <laughs> and then why don't you and I do them? Yeah, yeah why don't you two do it? With Brian and I and yes, Jason please. Together. Go, man, go. Yes, no? Yes. Yep. And I would move to approve this format with the merging of three, uh, one and four. Was it, Brian? Yes. And added. And we'll come back to you with the added bullet points. Sure. Um, it would be nice if we could get uh, Jacob's review done. Okay. So yeah. can we email us the added we need to go bullet points to the board? And if there's no objection for what? Jacob's review. We we're not doing it yet. Process. You know, to me, the bullet point. It's just the it doesn't really have to be part of the review, but yeah, it's a good time. I'll just remind them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's fine to do this. Did you hear that, Mark? You're good with that. I'm good with you. All right, bullets. I believe we can move on. Yep. Okay, Number now, 10. Wait, next. wait. Give me two seconds. It would be good also after you've done one review or two review, come back and give some thought for what really works and what maybe doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. This seems like something that you're reinventing the wheel. Maybe it takes some work. Um, did you really want me to wait or can we move on? No, I want you to wait. Okay. Agreed. So Evan and Brian will figure that out. Okay. Yes. So next up is the fire department review. I was proposing item number nine, so Lisa can go home. Oh, Lisa. You have, do you have any other items? You're all good, Jason. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. You can hang if Thank you want. Jason. Um, <laughs> Jeff stays in the whole top. Yes. I know, Lisa. I was looking for some ice cream. I told Mark to work, so it's not here. Pizza. Right, is there something specifically you're here for, Jeff, or you just yeah. love our company? Oh, yeah. <laughs> for, for, for presenting. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is great. Thank you for doing that. Um, <laughs> this will be the next select board member when there's an empty seat. <laughs> Welcome. Mark. Yeah. Um, okay. If I make it up. I know, right? Mark's, you're hanging out too. I would just propose that the, okay, I'm, are you guys good with the economic developer? I I thought about it more. I'm with you on that one. I'm pushing that out till October. I'm fine with that. I was just trying to get Lisa's item done. Are you okay with that? Uh, I am, but I want to just state that I think there's urgency involved in I do too, which is why I hesitated. Getting this done. Right. I agree because we got some interesting resumes. I did too. And the thing is that those interesting, the thing that changed my mind that's happening while you all are talking is that we got some really interesting resumes late, really late. And what if some trickle in and we're already running out of time and I would like to give it the time it deserves in our October meeting. Because I'm yeah. a little worried and we're too I, tired. You know, I would. I would be willing to have a special meeting just to talk about this because I think it's that important. Okay. I'll leave that up to you guys. I, I don't. I don't think we can say ten minutes because it ain't gonna take ten minutes. No, it's not gonna take ten minutes. Okay. Are you open? All open to a special meeting for that? Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go so. over the budget too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the voters. 
The other thing I would propose is that we push the number 11 and 12 off also. Um, as much as I'd love a status update on plot cemetery, do we need to do that tonight? Is there an urgency? We, we do, and I can do it very, very quickly. Uh, if, if we're going to do this, I, I need epoxy and grout, and I'm looking to see whether or not the board is willing to pay for the cost of the epoxy and grout. How much is it? To repair that. I don't know for sure that the, the stone is in pretty bad shape. It's going to need a lot of epoxy. It could be 45 or 50 bucks worth of epoxy. Yeah. A motion to approve purchase epoxy and grab repair. Second. Stones. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, me. Aye. Okay, ayes have it. Duncan's so there you go. Duncan's abstaining. I'm abstaining. You're abstaining. So there you go. You, you have your that. epoxy. Uh, thanks. Do you charge the time you spend with the back? No. Very, very I've got some very stuff on my property too. No, it's all right. <laughs> can we, can okay, we do let's number nine? Going. Yep, number right. nine. Okay. Right, Go, Brian. So, Lisa, wake up. Number nine uh, is to deal with compensation for limited interim recreation services. So, um, we've had a couple tasks that I've needed to bring Lisa's help in for. Uh, David is finishing up his two weeks, but he a lot of his time is committed to uh, right now doing some uh, training for the sheriff's department. So his, his availability is extremely limited uh, right now, mm -hmm. and we needed to finish a couple of things on the uh, for the soccer tournaments. You know, and Lisa was kind enough to volunteer some of her time, with the understanding that I do not have the authority to hire and. Uh, approve her pay for something like that. So I'm asking the board if they would approve Lisa's pay for the work that has been done so far, uh, nine and a half hours. Additionally, uh, when Dean starts the position, I'd like some more time, some more of Lisa's time uh, to facilitate training. Uh, so specific hourly rate? 30 hours or something? The 30 hours cover it? 30 hours, I, I think, would cover it. Plus the nine and a half. So if I made a motion for up to 40 hours. 40 hours, I, I would definitely be able to do it in under 40 hours. At the, the existing rate, which I okay. believe is. Well, there is not, so her former rate, because there is not an existing rate. Thank She's you. no longer an employee of the town. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I move that we authorize up to 40 hours of compensation for Lisa at her former rate. We, oh yeah, I can do this as a, a second piece. So, what is what a friendly amendment or something? There's also a specific request for car cleaning from for Lisa's uh, vehicle second. related to second. wreck activities. That's All right, motion and second. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Forty hours. All those in hour. favor. Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We're only at 40 hours competition. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to figure out how, since she has formally terminated her employment, presumably there wouldn't be a contribution to retirement. This would be just a straight 40 hours of it. Rosemary's our HR person. So I would leave the final determination up to her, but I do not imagine so because we're not talking about talking about contracted service, right? Contracted services, limited, and limited it's not going to be forty hours in one week. It's going to be, you know, nine and a half hours last week. You know, next week it'll probably be another. But regardless of the time frame, it's still contracted services. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the intent of your. I don't have to talk right now, but on my last. Case stuff where I did get like a couple hours of competition, nothing else, like there was none of the CPO or any other stuff that I used to get. Straight, straight competition. Yeah. So if it's if it's that arrangement, I'm okay. So you're an I? I'm an I. That's the intent of your motion, I see. Yes, it is. Okay. There's extra money on this one. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, next we, item. We Brian. appreciate your. Uh, we didn't actually get a vote on it. We need a full vote. 
We have I, 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 I. Everyone okay. voted. Okay. We're good. Thank you. All right. Uh, and the next item is card detailing for Lisa. Oh, you're not. Do we have an estimate? It was 100 and... So I um, used my car for rec as like a public service, public vehicle for three years. And so I did get it cleaned and I was in the seat asking for um, compensation for I think about $186 or something, whatever. And roughly under 200 similar things, 186 or 168. I think it was 186, but it was... Yeah. A slight, slightly less than $200. And so I'm, I'm requesting it as reimbursement, and I understand it wasn't pre approved. So if it, you can't reimburse it, that's not a problem. It's more, um, I want that conversation to remain in front of you that direct, the rec coordinator, who is a town employee, is expected to use their personal vehicle at the town rec for no compensation. For no mileage or anything? It is a problem. It's been an ongoing problem for three years, and it keeps coming up with some select coordinator. Getting last for the last off, ha ha ha, we'll see what we can do. It's a huge problem. No mileage. That makes it easier for me to support the detail. I'll make a motion to support reimbursing for the, for the clean, kind of like clean better of her car. For Can we have a motion? Do we have a second? Hundred dollars, Donna. Donna, you caught that. I think Eric was the one that seconded. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. May, may I interrupt on full disclosure? When I went to like fairly, I did get my so anything sort of a trip, or maybe twice I got my but not around town mileage. Well, I think you know with the mileage question. Going back to the personnel policy, uh, the employee is entitled to mileage. So if you're using the vehicle um, for, you know, if you're using your personal vehicle for town business, you should have been submitting for mileage and we should have been paying for it. Whether you chose to do that or not, I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but you the next person should be submitting for mileage. And if, if that's the case, the standard mileage reimbursement rate is intended to cover detail, cover basic use of the vehicle. So that's that's why I felt comfortable making the motion that I did because she wasn't. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know the details on that. It doesn't matter at this point because she's no longer an employee. But um, the new employee should be getting mileage reimbursement and they should be submitting on, on a routine or regular basis. Um, okay, we have a motion. So are we ready to vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Okay. Ayes have it. Lisa. And I, 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 I only want to say that my nay was I would have been happy to pay 50% of it um, because of the mileage reimbursement thing. and. I'm not sure that we should pay 100% of the car detailing. How much of that was directly related to, you know, your personal use of the vehicle and how much was related to recreation. But it's just what it is. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lisa, for your help. Thanks. It's very, very much appreciated. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Really go, Rick. <laughs> Okay, what's next? We so, have the fire department. Fire department contract. And this is what Jeff has been here for. He's the HR guy. I used to come a lot actually. It's actually not that weird. I agree with you. So um, we saw the contract last meeting, uh, kind of continuing with that with the kind of new board, new uh, talent or new village manager, uh, this is a pretty good opportunity for us to discuss changes we want to see in the contract. Are there any changes that the board would like to explore? Yes. I would like a yearly report, um, we, which isn't too much to ask for. We get it from them 
and we get it from the sheriff's department for emergency services. So I'm just asking for the same platform as all the other emergency services. I also think it would be advantageous if we were billed quarterly, not one lump sum in Q1. That actually won't affect their budget at all. It just just makes it easier for tax participation reserve fund and everything. But we don't pay it until we we just paid it yeah. one month up, which is still Q1 or this no, first Q2. month's Q2, right? July, August, September. No, but it's, no, it's, Q1. it's for the year 2022. So we have, we didn't pay it until September because that they don't because they're on the calendar year. because they give us it on the calendar year. They don't give us a budget to carry for a budgetary year, which is what I brought up in the last meeting. I also think that we should invite the fire chief in at some point. And I'm not sure how many of you read the meeting minutes from the last trustee meeting, but they're looking at about, a, they approved a $20,000 cost in a heat meter system of which village is not going to contribute anything to it. It's going to be for three towns. And the three towns basically count because a lot of them go to here by very minor players. So of that 20,000, the town's going to be on the hook about 15,000. Uh, yeah. They want to put a repeater at Ken Harvey's property uh, as an antenna or a uh, tower here. But I, I would like to question if they look at any other options because um, you know, they're, they're openly admitting we will not give them 100% coverage. It's just better coverage than they get now. And we're not going to get, or they're not going to get the uh, prime placement on that tower reserved for the sheriff's office. And we pay the communications budget in the sheriff's office. So maybe who they're trying to communicate with is the sheriff's office. At which point we're already paying for that. Mm -hmm. We're already paying for that. And this doesn't help MIMS, which is you know, another kind of part of this town. But the sheriff's department doesn't help them. No, the sheriff's department does, but this uh, repeater system is not going to help MIMS. It would be for the fire department. And then says the same, you know, uh, dead spot it's all over our town. But I, I think a, a longer conversation. So, does that mean that when we do get a copy of the contract, it's going to include a lot more money? They said in their minutes that they would pass on the cost for that repeater system to their contracted services. The town of Johnson is. I understand seven that. Eighths of that. I understand your point. At one point, at one time, <laughs> I don't understand how they get the votes on our budget. Right? Exactly. At one time, the village and town were equal contributors to the fire department budget. At some point, a decade or so ago, the village stopped increasing their contribution, and any increases that have happened since have been passed on to the town of Johnson. We are now over half the budget. Just the county town. But I thought fire department people were out of village trustees at that time. Say that again, Mark. Weren't there quite a few fire department members actually trustees at that time? Why would they want to do that to us? Well, there were generally at least two members on the board. For a while, I don't know what anybody is now. We're getting off topic. So, um, the specific question was about the document. It sounds like what we want to do is to invite a report before we see a document, so that we can have input on what what they present to us when they present a, a contract for next year. We can't request a report. We can request a report. All other emergency services do. Yeah. You want a budget I'm report specifically? Where are you going? A budget report would be yeah, a little bit more specific. 
Is that what you're asking? I just want to clarify. Uh, yeah, it will be a pleasure, of course. That's what we get from the sheriff's department. That's what we get from them. I understand that's what we get from them. But it would be also nice to get some quick. I mean, the budget report is different than instant report. When we get that, do we have a sense to you? They provide in the annual report. In the town report, number of number of fires, number of accidents. They're there. actually in the town stand or in the heating yeah. yeah. Okay. And I guess my other question would those need to be discussed at a joint meeting or could those be requested? We could request the we could request the fire department to make a report to us at one of our meetings. And I I would also like to request that we get a budgetary number from them in October or sure. November. Yeah. So that way we can carry the appropriate cost in our budget. Do you want to stick with your idea of quarterly payments for them? I like the idea of quarterly too. I find it advantageous. So we're not doing this high peaks thing with our bank accounts and the same thing's not happening with the village bank accounts. But that's kind of I don't see any disadvantage for them to receive quarterly payments rather than there's not. So, see no issues. in the town report, it does not talk about other towns, it only talks about number of Johnson Fire Department responses. And there were 115 alarms last year. And then it talks about there's a budget requested increase of 4.7. Uh, five percent, and that's it. It talks about why there's an increase with operating um, supplies, routine maintenance, fuel, feeding oil, just the operating costs. Um, so it doesn't talk about our relation to other towns in terms of responses, and it also doesn't say anything about village versus town. So I don't know if that is like if there's a distinction there or not. About that, actually. You mean the, the ratio of costs? Yeah, I was wondering if the village report has more detail. I think the village report does list the calls by community. But no, actually, I don't think they do. I think they, they I think the fire department provides that information to each of the contract towns, but not information on all incidents. Yeah. Does it, anybody else have any specific questions? Move to your quarterly payment. That's not going to be an easy thing. Why? For us or them? For us. Their first payment would be Q1 2023 Right. And we would still be operating on a 2023 budget. But their calendar is a little different. So we have to double up. We have to double up one year. One year. And we would still. No, because when we talked about it in the last meeting, when I said that we could possibly request a bump or a quarter to square up their calendar to our fiscal. But that would put us actually a full, full another year with no payments. It is true. It would get, it would actually have fewer payments for the transition period. And the same amount of money would exchange yeah. hands. But you're right, you have to do it. We'd have to way. true up. Really, but there's a true up. The hard times would be the first and second quarter payments because uh, their budget increases in the first and second quarter, but our budget doesn't take effect until July 1st. What we budgeted for the fire department did not cover us after January 1st. Because their rate goes up. No, yeah, I'm talking that they would need the budget appropriate. Where it's four even installments, not a mid fiscal year hike. Every, every meeting I go, go home and say, Why do we have village and town government? 
So. Do you ever answer yourself? So <laughs> to your question, Evan, about specific questions? That's what I think this item is about. I, I would like, if in fact that is what the trustees voted at their last board meeting, I'd like the fire chief to explain why the cost of the repeater is being proposed to be spread among the contract towns and nothing for the village. Why, why would the village not vote for a more expensive one? Yeah. So <laughs> the question is like, you okay. stay too long. I know. So let's, do we have contracts? Questions here? Any contra contract feedback? I think mine were the quarterly? It was they quarterly. Were. So we're going to have them come back for a presentation with us. I'm going to give them that these are some of the topics we want to discuss when they're here. That we want a budget report. Uh, we want a budget estimate starting in October to November. We're interested in quarterly payments, and we want more information on uh, their decision for the repeater and their decision on how to build the build the repeater. I think we should be asking about what our budget is looking like for the upcoming year. Yes, yeah. also very specifically, budget and then that. that should include any discussion they have for repeater or anything else. Okay. What did you just say? Okay, um, let's wrap up that one and move on to the next one. Brian, do you need right. anything else? No, I'm good for that. Up next is the local hazard mitigation plan. So we have adopted this ourselves. And uh, I should say that we, we proposed adopting it. The review process is that we draft this with the County Planning Commission after we, um, after we come up with an, a, a, a plan that we want to adopt, we submit that plan back to FEMA for final approval. At this stage, FEMA has approved it and returned it to us for adoption. This begins on packet page 18. Did FEMA make any changes that you're aware of? No. None that I'm aware of. And all of the actions that are prioritized at the end, they're all kind of never ending ones. I've got timelines associated with that. Does this, we, I happen to be flipping through the policies and there's this definitely old sub chapter B insurance and hazard mitigation, like using a typewriter. I don't see that anyone. That old? It's a FEMA document, it looks like. I'm not sure why it's here. Of concern at all here? I don't believe so. Motion to adopt. I have a motion to a second. Any discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. You said I too, Duncan? I did. Okay. Eyes have it. Um, we're going to talk about the candidates at the next on the October first October meeting. So uh, here is the late arrival language for the resolution. For the yes. Do all board members need to sign it? Yes. Okay, the select board of the town of Johnson find that the adoption of a multi hazard plan is required as a condition for communities to remain eligible for future FEMA mitigation grant funds. The town of Johnson has prepared the local Johnson local hazard mitigation plan to meet FEMA's funding requirement, a copy of which is attached in exhibit A 
and incorporated herein by reference. The select board has reviewed and considered the Johnson Local Hazard Mitigation Plan. The mitigation strategies and actions identified in the plan will be implemented only when funding sources have been identified and projects have been prioritized as outlined in the plan. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the select board of the town of Johnson, a municipality of the state of Vermont as follows. Section one, based on the above findings, which are hereby adopted, the Johnson Local Hazard Mitigation Plan attached as exhibit A is approved as the official comprehensive local hazard mitigation plan for the town of Johnson. Section two, this resolution shall become effective immediately upon adoption the foregoing resolution is hereby adopted this 19th, 19th, yep. 19th day of September 2022. Am I so old? Second to adopt or said resolution. All those in favor? Sorry. Aye. Me. Ayes have it. The village also has to adopt. Okay. So that's what that next page is. There you go. Okay. All right. Now on to the next one. Review uh, attorney's advice for dilapidated building ordinance enforcement. So you have seen uh, the advice from our attorney. Our attorney uh, does recommend that this is enforceable. Uh, our ordinance as written is enforceable. Did, did he have any recommendations as to whether or not you could take dual tracks on the enforcement provisions or did he recommend doing one or the other? Uh, I don't think that he recommended choosing one over the other, but that we could take the same offense and pursue different options on the same offense. We did talk about that in the, in the is it attached to it in the email? It's something about one option wouldn't prevent us from using right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, our standard practice is, is that we interpret letters from our attorney, but that we don't enter them into the public record. So we're, we can discuss uh, the letter from the attorney, but I did not include it in the packet. Okay. Um, any other questions or discussion about the dilapidated buildings? What do we have to do next? I've got the approval from the board on the uh, recording form for pursuing uh, an action. So we'll give it a, we'll try it out on a couple of the reports that we've had. We'll try it on one case kind of run through it, make sure that I'm gonna get all as many of the health officers together as possible um, as our designated agents to kind of work through the form for the first time. So that hopefully I don't have to do three different trainings on the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll begin pursuing a case. So There's plenty to choose from. Yep. Okay, all right. great, That's good news. All right, next up, planning for continued ATV discussions. So this is an agenda item because we just want to get a feeler out here. Uh, do folks want to pursue, pursue changes to the ATV ordinance? This is me asking the board, essentially. You are? I am. You asked when we're going to talk about it again. I was like, I want to get a feeler for interest. So are you interested? We had gotten some way in the amendments to different ordinances. I so think that there were, yeah, there were ideas thrown out. Yes, mm -hmm. it's true. So you're interested. Are you interested in continuing discussions on ATV? He's not going to be here. Well, you put my fork in your eye. What do you think? I think no matter what we do, we're going to have 50 
for showing up town with us and <laughs> down against us. But I think there are things that we should discuss. Okay. It is number two on our priorities list. I think that's number three. But we had two ARPA things. We had the, the development. We have to. Okay. I mean, right now, there's absolutely no enforcement. Okay. Like we'll get it back on. I'll just have to say that the last time we talked about it, I'm pretty sure it was the last time. Um, I asked for a whole bunch of, I asked for volunteers from audience and board members and no one was interested in getting a small group together to explore the law enforcement aspect of it, which was definitely a hot topic. So I think that if we're going to pursue it further, we need to actually have some dedication uh, to that I, topic. I will, I will walk Kai and Hollow last weekend. And I downloaded this Polaris like, ride command thing today. And, and they still have roads on that aren't on. So people are running around with this ride command thing that shooting down plot roads in different places that, you know, and we can all testify that whatever we have running with us, it's unenforceable. It generally doesn't mean anything. I thought Margo Warren said that she would be interested in this. Uh, I don't, it was, I believe the only person that actually, maybe I'm missing Margo, I have to go back and look. Um, but I believe the only person I can recall anywhere way is Neil uh, Neil Shepard, and that's because he reaches out every once in a while, so he's still interested. And do we know if fishing game is more than uh, here this year, or do we get? Like, I don't know what the status of fishing game department. fishing game did. Okay. So it would be nice to know even if we just get the call center. Uh, I can ask uh spencer has been my contact at the club and i can ask spencer uh if they had fishing game out this year and if he has anything to report i think fishing game didn't do it because they're busy in the summer they do some of the other patrol because they yeah you're right it i was, think it was the sheriff's it wasn't fishing game it was like a neighboring county sheriff right I think fishing game did do some ATV work. They did last year, but not this year. And the Spencer reported that Washington County or Caledonia, yeah. one of the sheriff departments yeah. was going to come in from further away for a couple of times weekends. for two weekends. I don't know if it happened or not. So they do the, you know, their ATV registration funds some of that money goes into a pool um, at the statewide level um, for enforcement. Um, so that's, you know, in theory, the, the sheriff's department could avail themselves of those monies. I don't know why the oil isn't willing to do that, but that's, you know, it wouldn't cost, it wouldn't cost them, it wouldn't cost us more. <coughs> And to Mark, you know, to Mark's point, um, you know, there are still signs out there. Like there are these little square 25 mile an hour speed signs that have been attached to our signs. Mines Road is, is an example. Mines Road is a class two highway. They shouldn't be on there, but there's a 25 mile an hour speed limit sign on, you know, on one of our signs. They shouldn't be on there. We took down a whole bunch of them, I think. <coughs> We, yeah, we, we the tap the highway crew took down a whole bunch of them. I think that may have been one they just missed. Is my guess. They they have taken those down. They've taken some of them down. I I'm not wouldn't. saying they took that one down. I'm saying yeah. that they had we'd asked them back late spring ish to take them down, and they had taken down a whole bunch of them. I don't know that. But obviously they missed the one you're talking about. So here's um, the flip side of that is, should there be a sign? So the class two portion of Mines Road um, begins at the intersection between Ben Over and Mines Road. That's class two all the way out to 100C and then Wilson Road 
all the way out to hundred C on the other end is also class two. They're not supposed to be on there at all. Should the town invest a little bit of money and a little sign that says no, no ATVs beyond this point? And I don't know whether that would do any good or not, but I think there are, are certainly some people out there right now. You know, to your point, the, the ATV club is, you know, they've got plot road listed as one of the one of the designated roads. Mm -hmm. It's class two highway. They're not supposed to be on there. Under the current ordinance. Under the current ordinance, yeah. Under the current ordinance. Yeah, maybe we're gonna, you know, maybe we will change that. So maybe my thought is premature, but I, I think we might need to be, even if we can't get somebody to enforce it, we could at least, you know, and I think the first thing that would happen is, is if Roger said, yeah, I'll do it for you. First thing he's gonna say is, do you have signs up at the beginning of the roads where ATVs aren't allowed? Otherwise I can't enforce your ordinance for you. I'd be willing to back. I shall not comment. Um, okay. So we'll put it back on, we'll put it back in the rotating list of things. Um, next up was reviewing the onboarding procedure for new hires. I um do you want to keep that? Do you want to push it to October for October first meeting? Let's do it quick. Go. Um, so to do this kind of quickly, uh, I think actually Duncan's proposed amendment covers a number of pretty good talking points to make sure that we cover with new employees. Uh, in terms of making sure that they have benefit documentation. Are you talking about his talking points for his proposed motion? Yes. Okay. Is, let me just ask a quick question. Is there kind of like a checklist for onboarding? You know, Brian does this, 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 right. Brian does this, this, this. Sets, this. resets computer password, ensures you can log in. Yes, we have, uh, we have the, the our division of, you know, Rosemary takes care of legal and benefits. I take care of job description and technology. Background checks, technology. Yeah. And we only do this for town employees that aren't underneath the library of trustees. Correct. Has there, there, has there been complaints about the onboarding procedure? No, I think that we can tune it up a little bit. Um, you know, I think that it's been something that I've thought, I've thought we could improve this for a while uh, and having just hired somebody and then having to just hire a second person, that really kind of drives it home to me that we could do a better job of, uh, we could do a better job of, on, of teaching somebody kind of what it is to work for a municipality and what the expectations are and what's different about this job than they've had at, at another job is where I think that we could, specifically where I think we could make a lot of improvements. You know, we're doing fine at handing somebody a job description and a copy of the personnel policy, but- That's not onboarding. Yeah. Yeah. So onboarding is really, it's a new term for me. I'm an old fart, so bear with me. But it really would be a, the equivalent to an orientation process. And an orientation would be could be generally described as a part of an onboarding process. You know, the onboarding is supposed to be the whole the whole thing uh, of yeah, getting the getting their paperwork done, giving them the documentation. Um, most employees do not sign a contract. Most employees are not contract employees. That's why the letter of offer of employment is pretty important, in my opinion. So are you proposing changes to it or just letting us know that you're going to think about changes and we'll discuss it a bit further? I think given where this is going tonight and our time tonight, I'm kind of letting you know that I've, I've got some ideas and some things I want to work through with this. 
I don't think that it would be a good use of our time to, I think this could turn into another very open-ended discussion. Yes, I do too. So, uh, so I'm not really suggesting anything right now. I'm going to make, I want to try and do better at this. I might ask, uh, you know, Beth, who's got some HR experience, if, if you've got time, um, and do a little bit of thought myself on with Dean joining us soon, um, helping Dean have a better experience learning the ropes and getting started here than, you know, than David. I like it. Okay. I was just going to If you have idea, why don't you do this, Jeff? If you have thoughts on steps for onboarding, why don't you send them to me and I'll pass them on. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. So you're going you're gonna to create a checklist, essentially. Yeah. A checklist and a plan because it needs to be more than just checking things off. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. And so we'll pick this back up. Yeah, create an actual checklist rather than the right now it's just kind of an understanding of where the division is. Okay. Okay. Um, so we'll reassess this under a follow up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Last item. Last item. Uh, executive session. Make a motion to the second session for employee review authorized under 1381. A3. Yep. Authorized under 1 PSA 313 A3. Um, well, do you mind inviting Brian? Inviting Brian. Do you, have a, do you have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it.